joke. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another day of Advent of Code. I gotta be honest, ever since Haskell has entered my wheel, I've had extreme anxiety. I, I catch myself constantly thinking about Haskell. Syntactically, the language does not make any sense to me. I keep having like nightmares about having to code in Haskell and having to like take off work because the code challenge takes like hours to complete because I don't understand Haskell. Let us pray to Odin and his friends that we don't get Haskell on the wheel today. Please God, not Haskell. Oh, thank God. Okay, Rust again. Have it again today. It's a good thing because yesterday Rust failed me. I lost the challenge first time, which allowed Haskell to enter the board. I am not going to allow that to happen today. Let's get after it. The gondola takes you up. Strangely though, as the ground doesn't seem to be coming with you, you're not climbing a mountain. As the circle of snow island recedes below you, an entirely new landmass suddenly appears above you. The gondola carries you to the surface of the new island and lurches into the station. As you exit the gondola, the first thing you notice is that the air here is much warmer than it was on Snow Island. It's also quite humid. Is this for the water sources? Okay, again, we're looking for water to help the elves create snow because it's not snowing for Christmas and we gotta have that. The next thing you notice is an elf sitting on the floor across the station in what seems to be a pile of colorful square cards. Oh, hello, the elf excitedly runs over to you. How may I be of service? You ask about water sources. I'm not sure, I just operate the gondola lift. That does sound like something we'd have, though this is island island after all. It's island island. I bet the gardener would know. He's on a different island though, or er, the small kind surrounded by water, not the floating kind. Okay, so we're in the sky. He's saying the guy that knows about the water source is somewhere else. We really need to come up with a better naming scheme. I'm also very confused. Tell you what, if you can help me with something real quick, I'll let you borrow my boat and you can go visit the gardener. I got all these scratch cards as a gift, but I can't figure out what I've won. So that's gonna be the input here. The elf leads you over to the pile of colorful cards. There you discover dozens of scratch cards, all with their opaque covering already scratched off. Picking one up, it looks like each card has two lists of numbers separated by a vertical bar, okay? A list of winning numbers and then a list of numbers that you have. Okay, so winning numbers, numbers we have. You organize the information into a table and your puzzle input, got it. As far as the elf ha has been able to figure out, you have to figure out which of the numbers you have appear in the list of winning numbers. The first, uh, the first match makes the card worth one point, and each match after that first doubles the point value of that card. So if we have one, it's one. If we have two, it's two. Three, it's four. So it's two to the power of matches minus one. All right, if we have one match, it's one. Two to the power of zero. Anyway, so here's our examples. We have card one. So this is the. These are the winning numbers. And these are our numbers. So in the example above, card one has five winning numbers. Bada bada bing. Four of them are winning numbers. Okay. It's four, two to the power of four minus one, three, two, two to the power of three equals eight. Okay. This seems very simple. So what we're going to do here, these are the winning numbers. These are our numbers. All we have to do is convert this into a set and then convert this into a set and then find the difference between these two sets. So it's gonna be the union of these two sets is our amount, that's it. Oh yeah, duh, not fucking, not union, intersection, intersection. Game equals line dot split on space colon dot nth for n is one, and let's just print the game. I, I know that we don't normally wanna unwrap this, but th this will never fail. Like this will always pass. Good, so we have the game here, so we'll split let winning equal game dot split on this dot n for n equals zero dot unwrap. Let ours equal game dot split on this dot nth n equals one dot unwrap. Yeah, so this is winning ours. Um, collections hash set. All we're gonna do is convert the input to two sets. Winning dot map and then per x. X dot parse two and i32. Oh no, it's u32. Oh, oh, yeah, winning dot split on space. There we go. Our num, convert the winning to ours dot split. Let's do um, dot split dot map dot collect. This is looking a lot more rustly. I'm liking this. So this is a vector u32 dot split dot map dot collect. Very good. So then now we can do let win set equal hash set from our number. Right, because again, the whole point here is making two sets, doing an intersection, bada bing, let our num equal hash set, or no, our set from, uh, oh no, this is not our num, this is win num, and our num, hash set, oh, 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 okay, it needs to be explicit, got it. Hash set of u32, 
Hash set of U32. Oh, 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 I see, I see, I see. I didn't realize you could just collect directly into a hash set. I see. Let's do winning equals win num dot intersection of our num. Parse in error value. Wonderful. Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> Line 21. Equal hours dot split on that parse. Oh, because there's going to be a, a new line. Trim the x, x dot trim. Yeah. That's nothing. Interesting. What is this? Oh, it's just, oh, there's multiple spaces. Okay. That's why. Better function for splitting the strings. Got it. Much better. So we have, right, four, two, two, one. Okay. And then, so right now we're going to have um, let value equal zero. We have two sets of hashable items. And because we make an intersection of two of those, the intersection values are borrowed. So then we have to copy them and then we collect them. Okay. Okay. I understand. And then we'll do print sum at the end. Print line sum or no value rather uh two to the power of winlin as i32 this minus one 13. okay so in theory this is the right answer we are trimming all the white space if there isn't a winning game we're good i think i think we have the solution here in much less time let's actually print out some games winning hours and it says that 26, 27, 17, 52, 26. I'm doing a lot of testing now, or at least like manual hand jam testing, because I don't want to have another horrible language. Ah, drum roll in the chat. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. <sighs> okay, great. I feel like this code is much more rusty. I feel like yesterday's code was like, iterate over a thing like do a thing per thing in a, a list like okay and i feel like also when you do these print onto new lines it, it makes your code look more like rust it's like oh wow look at that doing it with multiple functions having a map where we do a parse on essentially mapping like doing a parse for each makes it a lot more rustical move on to part two so just as you're about to report your findings to your elf one of you realizes that the rules have actually been printed on the back of every card this entire time there's no such thing as points. Instead, scratch cards only cause you to ha win. Oh, wait, wait. Only cause you to win more scratch cards equal to the number of winnings you have. Specifically, you win copies of the scratch cards below the winning card equal to the number of matches. So if the card, if card 10 were to have five matching numbers, you would win one copy of each of the cards 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Copies of the scratch cards are scored like normal scratch cards and have the same card number as the card they copied. So if you win a copy of card 10 and it has five matching numbers, it would then win a copy of the same cards that the original card 10 won. This process repeats until none of the copies you cause you to win any more cards. Cards will never get copied. Okay, hold on. So card one has four matching numbers. So you win one copy of each of the next four cards, two, three, four, five. Your original card two has two matching numbers. So you win one copy of each of the cards, three and four. Your copy of card two also wins one copy of each of the cards, three and four. Your four instances now of card three, one original and three copies have two matching numbers. So you can win four copies each of card cards, four and five. Okay. We could do a function where we have the game and its number. So it takes the number and the game as input and it returns a set of the numbers that we have to check. I think you're going about it too difficult already, but that would work. Yeah, probably. Write a function that recurses, hit the first line, play the game. Play the game to figure out how many games we have additionally to play and then do this function for every line. So effectively, we're gonna create a recursive function where we have the first line, play the game. Figure out how many games we win by this. We have now the winning amount of games. Then we're going to do the same thing, additional line, and keep recursively going down. Okay, let's let's run this and see what happens. <clears throat> okay, so infinite recursion, that's bad. This solution is too complicated. I can already feel that I'm overcomplicating this. We're gonna start over, because I, I can already feel 
that this is not going to play out correctly. The iterative version will issue is how do I hit this? Like if I if, let's say I play game, iterate over this game, figure out that I find, that I win game, that I, have, I get to play games two, three, four. How do I hit this line twice? Maybe I'm overcomplicating the problem. Card one or matching numbers. So you win one copy each of the next four cards, two, three, four. Oh, I could just multiply this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't have to, okay, duh. I don't have to play the game multiple times. I can just figure out how many times each game. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, that's so simple. God, why do I do this to myself, bro? Why do I make these things so complicated? So let's just do this, right? All we're gonna do is say winning dot len. Good, so four, two, two, one. So that means that we've played round one, one time. We're now going to play round two, one plus, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zero um, input dot lines dot count. I in input dot lines dot count zero up to that. And we'll say that let line equal input dot lines dot nth or n x i dot unwrap. So then all we have to do played of line plus equals one, not line, played of i. W in zero up to winning dot len played of i plus w plus equals one. So what I'm doing here effectively is create an array of all of the lines and the amount they've been played so far. Iterate over the file, get the line from the file, and then say that we've played that line one time. Then we play the game, figure out how many we've won, and then iterate over the amount of numbers that we've won, and then say that we've also played that line that many times. Let sum equal played dot iter dot sum. Odd. I'm not sure why I had to do that. Okay. Oh, we're accounting for ourselves twice. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's why we're 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 setting ourselves equal to. Well, no. Hold on. No, it's it's this played of i plus one. Yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. This should be it. Whoo! Holy shit, dude. I went way too hard in the paint for way too long with the recursive solution, right? I was trying to do some crazy shit where like I get to this line, I play the game. Then I recurse out and I say, okay, we're going to play the rest of the game starting here because we got, and you know what I mean? It just, it got way too complicated. We're gonna erase Russ. Chat, what do we want? Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of Lua. We're gonna add Lua. All right, Lua on the board for an adventure in Advent of Code. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed this one. Go watch this next video. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I, I really can't tell you, I have no idea. <laughs>